everybody, I am Danny Otto. Welcome into another episode of That Recap Show. Now, before we get into the episode, just wanted to issue major spoiler alert. We are going to be going over everything from Season 2, Episode 6 of the Bad Batch series. So if you haven't checked that episode out yet, you may want to pause this video, head over to Disney+, Plus, watch that episode, and then come back and enjoy the breakdown. Now, with that out of the way, let's start the show! Poppin' Off presents... That Recap Show. down everything from episode six of season two of the bad batch series it's johnny rico hello hey. how we doing <laughs> i mean i'm doing ecstatic right now because because i had everything i wanted it's my fucking wookie jedi yeah <laughs> yeah it finally happened it happened i got yeah. everything i wanted there you go everything i wanted in this episode it was there <laughs> I screamed, I screamed that out as soon as the episode started. As soon as it started. Get yeah, it happened pretty quick. I, was, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, yeah. Oh, I kind of was because the thumbnail of the episode kind of indicated as such that he would be showing up. But uh, it, other than that, like the, I, the way he was kind of incorporated into the story was really cool. I thought I didn't happen to expect it like that fast. And, yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Yeah, I went in blend. I didn't. I didn't look because I always have the because I'm the only one who uses it's. Me and my cousin have uh, the Disney Plus account, but he's got his profile. I've got mine, so I'm the only one who's using my profile. So I just have like continue like where I left off. So I didn't see a thumbnail or anything. It was mine just, stopped like, showing up, which is weird. I don't know why really? my continue watching just stopped showing up on my thing. Yeah, I don't know. I understand. Disney Plus, Dis- get your shit together. Yeah, Disney Plus, you got some explaining to do. We mm-hmm. we expect to hear back. Maybe just comment below what, what's yeah. going on with the, with the app here. A nicely worded email would be, would do. <laughs> And maybe, you know, like some free service or something. Yeah, that'd be great. Stand in on <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, I, being absolutely serious, I, I loved that I finally got uh, Gungi in person. Um, and and he was in the series. I mean, like I've been saying in my predictions, not so much a prediction, but just, you know, that I really couldn't wait for, for this episode. And I really couldn't wait to see a Wookiee Jedi and, and Gungi in general. I, yeah. I got everything I wanted. I thought it was a great episode. And uh, Rico, what were some of your instant reactions from this episode? Yeah, I actually had, I had a lot of fun with this episode. Um, we're still falling into these adventure of the week stuff, but this was a pretty solid adventure. We're falling into something that what we, and it was a cool callback to the prequels again because uh, one of the things I loved about this is that we got to go back to Kashyyyk, which is uh, something that in terms of movie and TV we haven't seen since uh, Revenge of the Sith. But um, yeah. I think the last time maybe that we were on Kashyyyk was in the Jedi Fallen Order game. Uh, there is a mission that takes place in there where you you meet Tarful as Cal. Um, so we know that there's still stuff going on within Kashyyyk. There's still like their own fights going on within there. Um, just like uh, Echo told him, like, there's going to be Imperial Outposts when we go there. Um, so it was really cool to go back and, and uh, to there, which is, you know, just a classic location uh, in Star Wars in general. And... Um, it's also kind of cool because it kind of revisits this unused Clone Wars arc that they had planned for the Bad Batch back in, uh, in the past, where they all they go back to Kashyyyk because, um, or they do go to Kashyyyk for the first time, I guess. Um, because in the episode, you hear Wrecker say, "Oh man, we get to go back to Kashyyyk. Like, I haven't been there in a while." So, like, we know that they were there at some point, uh, fighting for the cause. So, um, they, they kind of incorporated stuff from that into this episode, which I thought was really cool, um, like the creatures and, and just like the overall uh, the way the world works and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed going back to this planet and, and, and revisiting the Wookiees. And, of course, Gunji come, making his return back to to, uh, to Star Wars animation is really cool, too. Getting to see what he was up to. Uh, kind of what led him into the circumstances that he was in uh, coming into this episode. And, and then, of course, getting to see the resolve of that was really, it was really a, a fun, uh, solid little episode here. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. I mean... Yeah, I mean, on one hand, yes, it's kind of like the adventure of the week. But now, you know, we got the entire team back together and, you know, we're, we're introducing 
fan favorite characters, I guess, from other series of Star Wars and kind of dive, diving more into, you know, just like you said, planets that, you know, we haven't seen in a very long time, um, just in general in the Star Wars media, whether it be video games or the prequels or anything like that. So it's it's really cool to get that experience and to kind of, you know, see a little dive into, you know, Wookiee culture and, and what they're doing in, in this particular village and, and stuff like that. I thought it was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. You want to get to some big takeaways? Absolutely. Awesome. All right. I'm going to kick this off. And uh, you mentioned creatures. And I know you weren't referring to the Wookiees because then you would have just said Wookiees. So there was a particular creature yeah. on this planet that the second that it came up, I, I mean, the second that we saw anything <clears throat> referring to this particular creature, I immediately was like, nope, nope. Don't even show uh, it to me. Don't, don't, don't even show webs. it. To me. Yep. Saw the webs. I saw Wrecker starting to like cut through webs and I was like, nope, this is, this is going to happen and I don't want to see it. We got giant nope spiders and <laughs> I just didn't want to see these. Like <laughs> anyone who knows me knows I am not a fan of spiders. Look, I understand in real life, they're good for things. Like they, they, they keep the, the pests away. They, they do a lot of good things in, in nature and, and stuff in general, but Look, as long as they stay where where they are and I and not where I am, I, we're fine. But as soon as I see them, I don't want to have I don't want to be in the house anymore. <laughs> so my biggest takeaway from this, this is really is, ironic because your favorite hero is Spider Man. So. I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? It's basically like you know how when when uh, Bruce Wayne took on the persona of, of Batman because bats scared him as a child. Right. It's yeah. kind of like that. Is that what it is? Like, it's yeah. Exactly it's just like your it. Batman. Right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. It's my it's that's my origin, my Spider Man <laughs> yeah. uh fan origin basically. I'm you. terrified of this. So I have to I have to become one with the spiders to be Spider Man. I love that. <laughs> anyway. Amazing. Anyway, going back to Bad Bat, um, it was really cool to kind of see uh, the Bad Batch crew work together with the Wookiees and also have a Wookiee Jedi also kind of leading this march to, you know, kind of get rid of uh, or, or or I guess stop the the Empire, the Imperial forces. Um, but not only that, we had the giant nope spiders um, kind of help out, basically. I don't know if they were really helping out or if it would just led back to, you know, when we originally see them and... Uh, we hear that, like, look, if they're not provoked, then they'll leave you alone type of thing. If they don't feel attacked, then they're going to leave you alone. Um, so they kind of, you know, helped in their own way, basically. But it was just really cool to kind of see everybody join together for, for a common cause um, and, you know, work together to, to stop the Empire in, in this, little, this little microcosm, I guess, uh, fight of, you know, the, the rebellion in general. But Rico, what were some of your big takeaways from this episode? Uh, yeah. So one of the things I liked was, um, first of all, like the one they're playing on this whole, um, Trandoshan Wookiee, uh, rivalry that's always kind of been within the Star Wars lore. Um, cause there's a great arc within Clone Wars where, uh, the Trandoshans kind of hunt out like P- Padawan Jedi and, and, and other stuff as like for sport, almost like predator and Damn. stuff like that. So there's this really cool, or with within like the whole Trandoshans that then have been portrayed within Star Wars, um, that I think plays in really well here. I kind of like how they're kind of used as like like pawns for the Empire essentially because they give them like these old uh, kind of Republic era sh- uh, tanks and 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 kind of old gear, and they send out like a couple little troops with them. Like, okay, no, you can go and take out uh, the, the resources of Kashyyyk and stuff like that, and like you know, hey, go do our dory work for us, and if you die, like you die, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just kind of like you know playing into that whole like kind of rivalry between those two, but and I like how that's kind of portrayed. Uh, like you said, when when um, you know how the the, the spiders—I forget the name of the species, unfortunately—but uh, when they're you know they're they're only they're only going to attack you if they're uh, see you as a threat. So as soon as uh, there's that little moment which where I think Gunji and and, uh, and the leader of the the Trandoshans were like kind of at a standstill, and then one of the the spiders right there. Dungy immediately drops his lightsaber and is like, I'm not a threat. And then that's when the spiders take on the and there's a great shot of them spinning him up in his web and then just taking him away. I'm like, dang, that's pretty hardcore. Uh, so I really like that. Um, but the whole battle at the at the end there was really reminiscent to me of Return of the Jedi, where of course the rebels fought alongside the uh 
the Ewoks against the Empire. And it's all about kind of using their their home terrain to their advantage and and, and using it to defeat the Empire. And, and of course, in the original Return of the Jedi kind of script, they wanted it to be the Wookiees and Khajiit where they were fighting. So they, but they replaced them with with the Ewoks. And it was kind of more like kid friendly, I would say. Um, so it's kind of cool to kind of throw back little nods to that. You know, Filoni's going to try and do these little deep cut references any way he can. Um, we've been seeing multiple episodes that are just basically nods to certain moments within the original trilogy or, or the prequels. Uh, so I think that's been really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think this is a really fun uh, little bottle episode where we just kind of hang out on Kashyyyk and, and, and help out a, a young Wookiee Jedi who's trying to find his way along with kind of helping this, this young, young, young little village uh, kind of take back their land because it's just being slowly taken up, uh, away from them. So yeah, it's a really fun little episode. I really enjoyed this one. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I totally agree. And it really does go to show, you know, how the Bad Batch's intentions are always to, you know, serve justice, basically. Yeah, like the greater they, good. Yeah, they're they're there to help. It does not matter like who it is versus who it is. It's just like this is wrong for the Empire to be doing this. So we're going to stand against the Empire, even though we should be running so that the Empire doesn't know we're still here or that we're alive type of thing. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, that's bring up a good point actually, because usually when they're bring they're, they're kind of um, presented with like a possible mission, there's always some kind of hesitancy either from Hunter or from somebody else. But when it comes to like a, a kid that needs help, they, they jumped right into the action. Right. Like when they saw that Gunji was like alone and scared and like, okay, what are we going to do? Like, where are you going to go? Cause she, okay, we're going back to Kashyyyk. Let's go. And it's so, like, there was no hesitation from any of them. Like we're going to go, help this kid because this kid needs help and then of course like we can't help him if we if these people need help as well so like okay boom jump into that fight as well so yeah i really love that about this particular group of characters yeah absolutely uh you want to get to some big predictions yeah awesome all right why don't you kick off predictions for us so at the end of the episode we have uh the leader of the the wookie tribe i think i believe her name was yana uh where they're talking a lot um echo finally has like a translate kind of a visor that he's got going on there where he's kind of interpreting her words. Um, we're kind of seeing Gunji like kind of play into the customs of being a Wookiee, even though he's kind of lived as a Padawan on Coruscant most of his life. He's, he doesn't know what tribe was really his. And here he comes like the first one that he meets that like, they immediately accept him in. So it's all about finding his tribe, right? And, and, and feeling like you're at home. Uh, so, and kind of that plays into the end of the episode where they have this, she has this discussion with Hunter uh kind of about uh i guess kind of referring to omega in a sense but like is this kid gonna find her tribe and, and like kind of like kind of leads into what we think is we've been talking about the whole season like what what, what their future is going to be is it is uh is omega gonna find her tribe and, and kind of like find some some peace and comfort on this in this life that she's kind of lived the last uh, couple of years with the bad batch or is she just destined to always be on the run uh as like this kind of like as this clone that's very important to what they're doing, right? So it's very interesting to see where that's going to play into the future for her in general. Um, I think that they, they slowly kind of like are playing these seeds episode by episode. Like she's she's learning from every single person that she encounters. Um, you see the way that she's kind of hanging out with Gunji and and kind of ad uh, adopting the, the the customs of the Kashyyyk. Like she's trying to talk to the trees and all that. Very like Avatar esque uh, stuff yeah. as well. The way yeah, yeah. Like, they're like, hey, like this planet is also like the, the the planet's fighting with you too. Like the trees are part of the the fight. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. Just like a whole like kind of spiritual connection and stuff. I always did that kind of thing. Um, and so that's just another little element that that, that Omega is uh, kind of soaking in. And it's, it's just all again building that that more uh, in depth character for her that makes her different from the rest of the uh, the, the crew. Yeah, absolutely. And and kind of going off like off your side kind of same line of, of thinking, a thought occurred to me when I finished the episode and kind of it, it, it was really from that that very last, you know, talk and, and stuff like that. Um was I wonder, and we don't know, you know, how long the series is gonna go or how long even right. if like, you know, we may pick up these characters in a different series or, or something like that you know years down the line but i thought it would be so interesting if we get a flash forward at the end of the series and it is like an adult omega um and we find out that she you know has found whatever whatever 
is this is leading to whatever you know her life is leading to and we find out that all of these past seasons all of these past episodes all of these past adventures are stories that she's been telling type of thing about her life and i just thought like that would be such a cool way to kind of end this series would be a flat a jump forward and to, to show you know how big of an impact this group had on her on her life and and stuff like that so we could see not only where it led her to but also you know just the big things that kind of you know moved her as a person and 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 you know advanced her as a person and and helped her grow kind of personality you know everything as a as like this this you know independent person I just thought that would be a really cool way for the the series to end. I'm not not that we're ever going to get it anytime soon or or anything like that. Like I don't want the series to end anytime. Like soon. a rebels kind of ending where they jump forward and it, we see Ahsoka lives into right. Master Return of the Jedi, and then that leads into her own series. Because so what if you do this whole thing where you jump forward to her being an adult, and then that gives you an opportunity to introduce a live action Omega casted by an, as an adult, you know, and you can start your own series of tales right there because you can. Yeah. The more stories we're getting outside the main timeline like this, especially live action, they're proving to be some of the, the better stories out there right now. So yeah, yeah and it, as long as they do it right, they could definitely you know do that time gap so that it explains away why she's not in the original trilogy, and then we can pick her back up, you know, kind of in a better soft spot where it's like after the original trilogy, before the the newest trilogy type of thing. That that era that we're kind of living in with the Mandalorian and the Ahsoka series and, and stuff like that, we could really get another, like a, a live action adult Omega there type of thing. And I think it would be really cool to pick up her journey there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So yeah, I, I would be all for it. I think it would be awesome. But as I always say, that's what we think. Let us know in the comments below. What did you think of episode six? And where do you think we're going next? Like, are we going to get another adventure of the week? Are we going to get, you know, back on to kind of our main storyline with the Bad Batch group and Crosshair and the Empire and finding out how these guys are all going to start getting intertangled? And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to hear about all of our video and audio releases. Bye, everybody! Popping Off presents That Recap Show.